The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's Advanced Design Lunch and Learn webinar, where we will be going through the construction stages in advanced design. So we'll be looking at um, that all-important structural engineer's design formula with advanced design. So I can see that uh, a number of you have joined. I'll just allow a few more minutes just to give everybody else the chance to join, and then we will sure get to cracking. So while we are waiting, can somebody just confirm that you can hear me OK and see my screen OK as well? So can somebody just confirm in either the chat or the question box? Thank you very much. So I will just uh, switch to the presentation screen. And hopefully you should see the presentation now. OK, so I will be with you shortly, in just a few minutes, uh, just when a few more people have joined.
Okay, so good afternoon to those of you who have just joined the session. Um, welcome to today's Advanced Design Lunch and Learn webinar as part of the Advanced Design Lunch and Learn Week. So today we'll be looking at uh, construction stages in advanced design and that all important structural engineers design formula. So my name is Jamil Dida and I will be um, presenting this webinar to you today. So this webinar will also be recorded um, and you also have a copy of uh, this of the handout of this presentation. So that uh, contains the, uh, the links um, to contact me. So you can contact me on either LinkedIn and also if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. So you have those links there in the handout. Okay. Um, and it's, if anybody has any questions during the webinar, please make sure to post these questions in either the chat box or the questions pane as well. And I will pick those up towards the end. And if there are any other questions, um, please feel free once again to drop me an email. So a little bit about myself. So I'm an application engineer here at Greytech and I'm responsible for providing uh, you guys with the latest content. So that's webinars such as this, um, training, and also technical support around the structural products which I cover. So namely advanced design, the advanced design modules, um, idea statica and robot structural analysis. So before joining Greytech, I worked as a structural engineer in the industry for several years. And uh, during my time with industry, I've, des I've designed structures um, across a variety of sectors. So most importantly, the most important ones, in the retail, uh, educational sector and residential sector. So um, all, all projects, small and large, from simple, single member designs, goalpost designs to multi-story um, RC structures, I have designed during my time. And I have experience designing these structures in a variety of materials. So that's in masonry, concrete, um, RC concrete, and uh, steel structures as well, uh, both to Eurocodes and British standards. So, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, webinar is going to be recorded. So, this will be published um, on our Great Tech uh, Content Center. Um, here is where you can um, find access to our all our um, latest uh, information. So, we regularly upload uh, content to our cent content center. So, this can include industry workflows. Um, and some of our experts share best practices um, around that could be around modeling and design or um, just general tips and tricks. So please allow um, up to um, two working, sorry, two weeks or 10 working days for us to upload these uh, webinars, which uh, you can find on there on demand. So an overview uh, of what we will be covering today. So today, I'm going to take you through the process of uh, construction stage design, advanced design. So obviously to design um, for construction stages, there are a number of factors which uh, we need to consider. So we need to, we want to be able to um, analyze the structure at each design between each uh, design interval to see how it behaves before we go on to the construction for the next. So with advanced design, we have split this workflow down for you into a series of simple steps. So that involves um, introducing phased subsystems to manage your model. And then that takes you onto stage loading. So you apply your loading in stages for each of those stages. Um, I'll also be going over the load combinations. It's also, it's also important to define your material settings. So there are some uh, materials and or so, sometimes in cases you have temporary propping, which uh, you can use, which you use during the initial stages of the construction. When you go on to the next stage, uh, that prop is obviously then once the formwork and everything's in place, you can take that prop away and you don't really need to consider the effects from that uh, prop. So that will show you how to deal with that uh, with the material settings. And when it comes to actually analyzing the structure itself, 
you want to be able to um, analyze the structure by phases. So by the stages, at each stage, you want to be able to have a look at the results. So for that, we have an option called calculation by phases. So I'll just quickly uh, outline the calculation by phases. And then towards the end, uh, we'll go and have a look at the FEM results. So we can see that in action live as well at the end in, uh, in advanced design. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's session. It's time now to get cracking. So construction stages in advanced design. So here's a typical structure that I'll be looking at today. But it's a multi-story um, steel construction. Okay? So a commercial or a, uh, a retail structure here. So now the question is, how do we go from this structure, simple two bays, then to this, being more complex? We need to consider the construction stages. We need to design this in stages as well. So now here comes the important design formula. So everything has a formula. Once you correct that formula, um, your workflow or the end result, you can get to uh, very quickly and easily. So I'm going to share with you that formula today. So to begin with, uh, what we'd like to do in advanced design is define our subsystems. So here in this case, for this particular model, you design um, the subsystems, okay? So define the subsystems into the phases. So this will be split into three phases, yeah? Um, so you can see on the screen there, phase one, two, and three. So phase one simply consists of two stories, and you can see a two-base structure. In the second phase, when it comes to construction on site, they will be adding, um, extending that structure to the right with two additional bays. And in the final stage of construction, they will be, the contractors will be adding um, the final floor on the top to form that uh, multi-story structure. So you can create these subsystems to manage um, each phase and each level as well with your elements. So it's also once we've done that, the next important step is to make sure that we have assigned our loading in stages. Now we can assign all of our loads, but we don't want to apply them all at once because different loads will behave on different members at different stages. So we want to be able to control these loads at which stage we apply them and which stage we don't want to apply them. So in this case, we will add, um, we would add three stages of three loads for a typical three stage design. So you can see here, I have an example of some, uh, some dead loads, live loads, and also wind loads with our powerful 3D climatic load generator. Okay, so you can you see from stage one, stage one design just covers the, uh, the left of the structure, stage two with that extension on the right, and the final stage with all those floors. So you've got all your loading um, applied in uh, at once simultaneously to that structure. Now, in terms of load combinations, we also want to be able to define combinations um, for the various different phases as well. So obviously we can't use the um, same combinations or same number of combinations at each step. So as we introduce a new story or an additional bay, we want to introduce uh, additional combinations. So before where you saw I had three sets of um, dead loads, live loads and wind loads. For those we need to have, um, to correspond with that, we want to have three different lists of combinations. So you can see on the left hand side here for phase one, we have combinations one down to 21. So we have 21 combinations for each stage. Now you can see the 100 combinations, they're very easy to notice and manage through uh, the notation. So 100 combinations are for phase one, towards the middle. The 200 series combinations are for phase two. Phase three is denoted by those 300 series combinations you can see. But of course, these combinations uh, would generated manually so you can generate these combinations using the automatic generator or um, you can import and export your uh, combinations uh, to and fro between projects with our uh, bi-directional link with uh, Microsoft Excel. Now once we've defined our combinations and uh, our loads we also want to consider the materials. So in the initial stages the first phase, 
this uh, simple goes, um, goalpost frame. So this is an example of a, a simpler structure. So I've broken, broken down the, the initial structure, which we saw at the beginning, into a bite-sized chunk here, just so we can see how the materials work uh, at each stage. So in this stage, you, we want to go from, for this goalpost structure, initially we'll use um, temporary props. We want to go from the props then to self-supporting uh, goalpost frame structures at the bottom you can see here. For that, we need to dis we need to assign different materials for each of those elements. So phase one. So for the phase one, when we're going to go from creating those the goalpost frames, then to adding that uh, additional story um, on, on the top. So you can see um, at the bottom right here, we have a series of notations on uh, on these um, on these frames. So we have generally the finished structure is to be constructed in S235 um, steel, um, although nowadays we tend to use S355 uh, for the majority of our designs, but for just this example, um, I've chosen S235 for the end result. So um, after we've in constructed the initial goalpost frame, we want to be able to then remove the props. Okay, So we'll have it there physically, so instead of having to delete that in the model, and then reanalyzing again, we can simply assign it a different material property. So if you look to all the bottom here, you can see um, those columns have now got a pass notation next to them. So what we're trying to say here is that uh, these materials are now in the past. So we're moving from phase one to phase two. Uh, so from the initial temporary propping to phase one. So we can consider this material in the past. Okay. And we also have a series of future elements. Yeah. So these are um, with these are elements which are going to be constructed in the future stage or phase two. So phase two involves um, in constructing those uh, the green elements which are noted by the future uh, notation that you can see. Now on to phase two. At phase two, here we want to then finally go from these uh, the future elements then to a fully constructed. Um, example here. Although this has only got two phases, it's just broken down so you can see it and understand it a little bit better. So in the final stage, we want to go to all of the structure being constructed in at uh, the one material there. And then of course, once again, the props will remain a thing of the past. Okay. So now, how do we go back to the future with the materials? I'm sure many of you are familiar with Dr. Emmett Brown and Marty McFly and their adventures for um, Back to the Future. We can apply a, a similar um, analogy to advanced design, um, although we do have our own uh, famous, uh, you can see Dr. Emmett Brown holding a, a control there, but uh, we have a similar control settings for, for the material settings. So time to apply that uh, analogy. So future and past material settings. Now, the materials are managed through our um, material settings dialog box. So here, what we'd like to do is add two additional materials in here into the mix. So we've got a future material and a past material for those uh, temporary problems. Okay. So for each of these materials, we then assign um, a rigidity value. So we give it a, um, a, a manual rigidity value, which is close to one for the longitudinal and transverse rigidity. If it's zero, the calculation will turn a null result and therefore the FEM won't be able to run. For the FEM analysis to run, we will assign a, um, it's important to assign a value close to one for the transverse longitudinal rigidity. Here, the numbers have uh, been rounded off to uh, the nearest whole number here. For the density, um, again, we kept it close to zero. So in this case, I assigned it uh, 0 0.0001, but you can see it's rounded that uh, up to zero. So it's important then to make sure we have that those future and past materials in the materials box ready for us to apply onto the structure between each stage. So calculation by phases. Once we've defined our materials, we then want to be able to run a phase calculation so that we can go from one phase to the next. So to go from phase one through to three, we need to um, be able to tell advanced design 
which combinations and cases to consider at uh, each stage. So phase one will have um, different combinations and cases to phase two and phase three. So if you remember earlier, where I showed you we had three sets of um, combinations for each phase, you will, we will apply then at the calculation phases step, you would apply um, the corresponding combinations for each of those phases. And if you um, look at to look at the bottom of this uh, this option, this box here, we have an option to pause the calculation at every phase. So of course you can run the calculation continuously, but we've introduced a calculation at every phase. So that allows you to almost, for example, if you imagine on site, they're constructing the building, you're pausing that construction at each stage just to see how it's behaving. So you've got almost a, a, a watch to stop in people in time. So you pause everything, you see how that structure is behaving, and then you press the play button again. And they go on to the next stage. You have a look at your um, your displacements, your forces, um, your, also your, your steel designs, and then you go on to the final stage. So we've got that sequential calculation to seamlessly allow you to transfer, go from phases one to three and analyze that structure each stage, see what it's doing and how it's behaving. So um, now I'd just like to show you that in that action quickly. So this part, I'll be going through the calculation by phases and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look at some, uh, some results towards the end. Okay, so if uh, I just show you quickly, you go about that here. So here I have the structure. I'm going to create a new analysis. Okay, so I'm going to create the mesh first. With the meshing, you have the option then to define your calculation by stages. Traditionally, you would run the calculation um, in one go for the building, but we've got the calculation by phases option. And going into here, you'll see an option to add um, manually add phases in. So in this case, I'll add three phases. You can add as many phases. Um, as suits you for your project, then you can see how easily I've assigned my combinations and load cases. So I've given it a dead live and wind load, and I also want to consider my envelope combinations in the 100 series. For phase number two, we've got our second set of uh, dead wind and live loads, along with the series 200 combinations to apply to that phase. Phase three, we see that uh, again dead, wind and live, along with the series 300 combination. So I've got a combination for each phase now. I'm going to pause this calculation at each phase. So let's click OK to that. Now the initial calculation here, we will see results just for phase one. So once this calculation is finished, you'll see in the results that we have a set of results for the series 100 combinations related to stage one, and also you have your load cases for, for stage one, okay? So over to the results now. So if I now switch over and have a look at uh, some of the results. So you can see on, uh, on the left-hand side here, the, the black ticks represent the cases which have been included in here and orange ones which, uh, which are not included in this step. So the first stage you can see is purely containing just the um, stage one combinations, we have a displacement there, result for that. Okay. Um, and then by one click, it's automatic now instantly going to take me from um, this, uh, this first phase into the next phase. You can see on the left hand side the combinations. A simple click then now takes me into the second stage. Okay. So we've gone from stage one to stage two. This will involve that uh, the structure on the right hand side, bringing into play those loads at that stage. Okay, so now let's uh, now the contractor introduces that structure on the right hand side, and how is that going to behave now in terms of um, displacements? So you can see now we've got series 200 combinations for that stage as well, in addition to the first ones. So let's select a ULS combination for stage two. Okay, so that's our general sort of displacement for that. I'm going to save this view. With our dynamic views, we can save the, the results at each stage. And finally, the final click of a button, launch that calculation. This will now take us into the final phase.
So you can see exactly at the bottom which combinations are being calculated. Now we have our full multi-story structure here, and we should be able to see the series 300 combinations in addition there. So now we have all of our combinations with that finished structure. So let's have a look at that final um, displacement. So you can see it's considerably uh, a lot more. We've gone from about 50 millimeters to 206 millimeters. So I'm just going to update these views then to show you how, seamless, how you can seamlessly transfer um, or go between each of the results for each stage. So that's stage one, stage two displacement, still quite similar. As we add the final story onto the top, you'll see that increase. So here we can also look at the animation at each stage. <laughs> a very handy tool to have so you can see how the structure is behaving globally in general. So adding a story, final story onto the top with the final loads at the top has considerably increased uh, That's a displacement there for each of the stages. We have also, I've also decided to save a set of uh, forces, so the moments in the MY direction. Just quickly go through again, stage one, two, and three for the displacement. So you can see just how easy that was. If I were to amend my model, I can enable the automatic um, updating of these views and I'll update those accordingly. So here you can see our moments. So moments are, the moments here you can see are generally consistent around 180 to 200 kilonewton meters as a maximum for our beams and columns. Okay. So those are the results there. In this case, I've just shown the FEM results, but uh, you would also do the same thing for the steel design. So on the right hand side up at the top here, you can see options for the deflection. Um, and also you'll find your various uh, other results here. So the stability checks, your strength checks, um, and also your work ratios. So you've got all of your steel design and displacement um, FEM results side by side. And you can apply the same analogy to the, the steel design as well. Um, now just to finish off with, Let's see all three results together, so we can see that, uh, what that looks like with those results combined. Okay. So although this has been um, a very brief overview of the construction stages, now for the final minutes of the webinar today, I'll just open up uh, the panel to some questions. If you guys have any questions, please post these questions in the questions pane or the chat box. And now's the time to ask those questions. Um, after that, I'll be looking to uh, close the session for today. So I will just allow you um, five minutes or so to come up with any questions if you have. That could be on what I've shown today, or it could be a question in general. So feel free to post a question.
Okay, so I can see a couple of questions uh, in the questions pane here. So we have um, a question from Guillermo. I hope I've pronounced that uh, correctly. So um, he asks, when I need to run an analysis done in phases, I've had to redefine again which load cases apply to each stage. Is there a way to save them? Now, as you saw earlier with the calculation by phases, you you would um, assign your phases and then add those load cases to that. And that automatically saves your load cases and combinations for each phase. So you're, uh, you're adding them to a bank of cases for each phase and they are saved in there. All you then have to do is just um, um, run the analysis for the number of stages you have. So if I have four stages, I would run that analysis four times after having defined those phases, and that will then automatically apply those load cases along at uh, each stage with that. Of course, when you come to open a new project, or if you come to reopen the project, um, if you haven't saved it before, if you haven't saved the project, you will then need to redefine those cases. But within that same project, you define them once for each phase, and then just uh, analyze along the way at each stage, okay? And that will perform the analysis. And then you can save those views as I did. You've then got a set of uh, results for each stage. So you don't have to keep redefining those combinations. I hope that answers your question, Guillermo. The next one I can see here is from Arya Batra. Um, I hope I have not sure your name correctly, so Aryabhatra Kumar. And he asks, can you post a recording of this online? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded and it will be uploaded uh, in due course to our uh, Great Tech Content Center, as well as the two previous ones. So if you missed a session on Monday or Tuesday, they will also be uploaded to our Content Center. They're not on there at the moment, but uh, we are in the process of uploading these two there. So you can access that. Uh, you will have the access to the full um, lunch and learn week on there as well. Okay. So um, I can't see any questions, other questions at the moment. But uh, if you do decide that you have any other questions that you would like to ask me, I will just post my email address again um in this uh the chat box so you can send me an email with any questions that you have and i would be glad to answer those for you so now you have um in the chat box my email address once again so now before before we all go away i'd just like to remind you what else we have planned for later on the week in case you're not aware so coming up as part of lunch and learn thursday tomorrow I'll be looking at RC design. Oh, yes, reinforced concrete design. So that is a structural engineer's journey going from analysis to design. So I'll be looking at um, a structural, um, a structural uh, concrete structure. And then I'll be taking those concrete elements through to design using the design modules. As part of uh, Lunch and Learn Friday, to finish the week off, we'll be, I'll be sharing with you some of the most important templates so that you can use to speed up your productivity and complete, complete those projects faster and more accurately. So that is a structural engineer's perspective on increasing that productivity. Once again, that's at 12 o'clock. So both webinars at 12 o'clock. So make sure you tune in Thursday and Friday where I'll be going through uh, these topics. And before I finish, we can also um, we, we can also um, produce a, a tailored demonstration for yourself or your organization. So that can be um, around your needs as a business or what's how you get to choose the content that goes um, initially steer the content for that demonstration. We can provide you that demonstration. So if you are interested in a demonstration, please make sure um, you send us an email. So you can send me an email to my email address and we can then look at uh, booking in a demonstration for you. So a tailored advanced design presentation, a demonstration for your business needs. So that's it from me today. So thank you for watching today's webinar and joining me today um, on the construction stages in advanced design. Hope you've enjoyed today's session. 
and make sure to follow us on our social media platforms. Um, we, are, we are active on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. You'll find the latest tips and tricks, news, offers, and also any upcoming events. So thank you for watching, and it's bye for now. I hope to see you guys tomorrow and on Friday as well. Bye for now.